Hey, it's Amanda at Crafters Autonomous. Please don't ask me what the deal was with that intro because honestly, I have no idea either. So let's get our materials. You will need two round balloons, you know, like normal balloons. Mine came from the dollar store. And you will need three balloon art balloons, like those long ones. And I got mine at Walmart because I couldn't find them anywhere else. So thank you, Walmart. I'm making the head and body of my penguin white with blue accents and orange beak and feet, but you can use whatever colors you want. Oh, and a balloon pump is a necessity for the long balloons. The first step is to inflate the head of our penguin. This is one of the normal balloons. You can go with whatever size you want, but smaller turns out better. Mine is just a little bigger than my fist. With our second round balloon, we are going to inflate the body. I made mine bigger than the head and size it to be proportionate. If you aren't sure on body size, overinflate the body, hold it up in comparison to the head, and then release as much excess air as necessary. Once my balloons are tied off, I need to stretch the tails as much as possible. To do this, I grab the knot on the same side as the tail and then pull firmly on the tail. The knot should roll back towards the inflated part of the balloon, leaving a longer tail. Once I've done this to both balloons, I will tie them together by their tails using a basic overhand knot. The more that you stretch out the tails, the easier they are to tie together. Let's set this aside and make our feet and our beak. I start by over inflating the long orange balloon. We will let air out in a bit, but I feel it pretty good and tie it off. Now this is where we start with some balloon animal technique. If you've never done this before, you can practice on an extra balloon first until you get the feel for how to twist and hold the balloon. I promise it's not as hard as it looks. I like to hold the balloon in my left hand, which is the right side of the screen for you, and I grab the section with my right hand. I then twist the right hand section away from me. This creates the first piece, and this piece is just for assembly purposes. To make the first foot, we need to section off a larger piece. I'm going to hold the first section in my right hand, pinch the new section off also with my right hand, and then twist the left hand section towards me. Next, fold the long piece of the balloon alongside the sections we've made. Then twist the entire thing together, pivoting around the first twist we made. For our second foot, we will section off another piece that's the same length as our first foot, twist that off, fold it over, and twist it together for that foot. It should look about like what I have here. Now we need to cut off the excess balloon. Work the extra air towards the end, pinch off your balloon, cut it, and tie it off. I like to wrap the tail around the first section and then tie it because I think it holds better. Hang on to the piece we cut off though. So these are the feet. Now grab that piece we cut off. This will be our beak. We're going to inflate it, work the air to the end, and then size it down by letting out air a little at a time. I found that a smaller beak looks a lot better than a larger beak. Once you have it the size that you want, tie it off with an overhand knot. I accidentally let out more air than I was meaning to while tying. Oh well. Next we will finish the head and add arms. I'm going to inflate my blue long balloon and tie it off. I need it to be long enough to wrap around the head balloon and also leave extra on both ends for arms or wings or whatever penguins have. Make sure the ends of your balloon line up. Then figure out how much is needed to fit around the head. I'm marking that spot with my fingers. Then I will pinch the two sides together at that spot and twist it up. It will look almost like a fish. You can also stretch and shape the round section at this point if you want by pulling and stretching on the balloon. Once I'm sure it's the right size, I tie off the end of the balloon and cut the excess tail. Now we will add this piece to the head and the body. I found the easiest way was to work the round part around the head first by slowly stretching and working the balloon around, and then pulling my arms to the other side of the head and body. They all kind of interlock together. So the arms will sit in front of the blue part of the head as well. It might look a little off balance for now, but we'll adjust it later on. With our last long balloon, we need to inflate it so it can fit around the body balloon, kind of like we just did with the head, except this time we don't need arms. We do need just a little bit of excess on both sides though to allow for assembly. I size my balloon, pinch off the excess, and twist around where I'm pinching. Once again, I cut and tie off the excess balloon. Now, okay, when I was filming this, I wasn't feeling too good, plus I was concentrating really hard and was looking away because I have this weird fear that a balloon's gonna pop and a piece is gonna snap into my eye. So anyways, that all combined to make it like super like comatose or something, I don't know. So I made a second penguin and also found a better way to assemble it in the process. That way you can actually see what I'm doing and not watch me with this weird face. So the idea is we need the arms of the penguin to go through the blue body loop, but then I had the thought, why not just go over the head? It works the same way. So that's what we're going to do. 
Bring the body piece over the head with the excess pieces on the same side as the arms. Then work the loop of the body to the back of the penguin like shown. It's going to notch into the same place as the arms and head are, and the little extra pieces will stay on that side as well. This is all going to interlock to hold the penguin together. Now all we have to do to finish the body is stretch the loop around the body balloon and twist the head. To twist the head, I'm going to grab both excess pieces from the body and the entire head part, the white and the blue. Then I twist them 180 degrees. This puts the excess pieces on the back of the penguin, holds the arms in place, and keeps the head oriented correctly. I'll show this twist again with our first penguin. And that, my friends, is the hardest step. So if you made it this far, give yourself a round of applause because you deserve it. Lastly, we need to add the beak and the feet. To add the beak, take the tail end of the balloon and run it between the head and blue piece. I slide the beak down to the middle and the front, then twist the tail around the back to hold it securely in place. With the feet, I take that extra piece and push it between the blue and the white of the body on the bottom. This piece will go behind the penguin and the feet will stay in front. This interlocks and holds the piece in place. And now you are done! Of course, you can add eyes as well, although I haven't decided what eye style looks best. My sister said I needed more cartoon looking eyes, so I tried that for my second penguin and, well, yeah. But there you have it, an easy beginner friendly balloon art penguin. Stick around until the end of this video if you want to know how my sister reacted to my second attempt at making cartoon eyes. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you leave a like if you are able to follow along, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button before leaving. Happy crafting! Okay. Here's the first one with the eyes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then for your advice, I went more cartoony.